nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Coil Cast. This is episode number 54 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And in this method, we're going, <laughs> in this method, in this episode, we're going to work on the rollability scores method. So we worked on the configuration and then refactoring the configuration of this the last two episodes. Now we want to have the ability to, in nerd dice, call rollability scores, pass some options, and get back the number of dice that we're providing there. So we'll get in and start writing our specs. This will be directly in the nerd dice folder. That will adapt to this. And I'll pause and write my it statements. All right, so I've got my it statements written. Let's talk through them. So we're describing the rollability scores method. Without options, we're going to use the configured number of dice sets, number of dice, number of sides. Hold on. Keeps, can, so number of dice, number kept, and then number of sides. It'll use all of those from configuration. If you specify the numbers, it should use the specified numbers, so we'll test for those. Um, if you've got options on both the ability scores and the dice, uh, you want to specify the options on uh, how you roll the ability scores and on the, uh, the dice sets that you create. And then on the dice only, you would use the configured stuff from the dice set uh, from uh, for the ability scores, but then you'd still pass on the applicable attributes to the dice set. And then uh, when there's an error that you specify more dice kept than rolled, it should raise an argument error, which we already have built into the dice set. So this is just kind of a redundant check to make sure that we're raising the right error in the expected place. So I'll go in and start implementing these, or writing these specs with more uh, specificity. I'll pause and we'll look at this again. All right, so I've got this first set of specs written. It will set the result to, um, ooh, roll ability scores. Got to call the right method. Okay. So anyway, we will now go through. So I added in a spec at the beginning here that um, makes an expectation about the result being an array. And then the number of dice sets. So the length of that array should be equal to what we've got in the config for the ability score array size. And then on each of the elements of that dice set, it should have the number of dice equal to the amount specified in the config. And then on the, um, the number of dice kept, we want to make sure that we're keeping those um, those dice, so we'd be rolling with it advantage on this and um, keeping the highest specified number. And we would then look also to make sure that each die has the correct number of sides. So let's at least see if this will compile. Compile in a very 
figurative sense, considering that Ruby's a, an interpreted language, but. So we've got failures, which is good. That means we don't have any syntax errors or anything. The authorities are angry with us. Oh, I'm missing the, the magic frozen string literal comment. And then interpret this grouped expression. We'll try auto correcting that and see how it changes things. space between between let and my parentheses that's what they were upset about so let's I'll go in and um, so the returns an array I want to have specified everywhere So I'll, I'll go in and write now the, um, the version that has options on it. All right, so I've got the second block written here. So I went up to the top of the spec class here and added an ability score options hash and a dice options hash. So in this case, with options on ability scores, we're calling roll ability scores with the double splat dereferenced ability score options hash here. And it will essentially do the same thing as our first set of specs, but instead of getting its uh, comparing and it being equal to the amount in config, it will be what's specified in the ability score options hash for the particular key. Now we've got the options on the ability scores and the dice. So this for the for this it's going to have the same for all of these, it's going to be the same values as we had in the second block, and then it will add in information about the, the specified foreground color, background color, and randomization technique. So pause and write this. So for the situation with ability scores and dice, what I did to pass into this argument was ability score options, and then I called the merge on this with dice options, and then called the dereferencing operator on it. So if you look at a situation in the console, you've got hash one with the key foo, the value bar, and then Baz with the value of quux, then uh, you can't just do uh, addition. It won't um, operate on it that way, but you can do hash one dot merge hash two, and you'll get a result that is the 
merged versions of those hashes. So that's what we're using there. And then all of these items about the specified number are verbatim the same as what was in the with options on ability scores. You might be thinking, hey, this is a good opportunity to use shared examples. You would be right. We'll get there after we implement the, um, the actual um, method. We'll, we'll re refactor it after our tests are passing, make sure that the number of tests are the same and that they, um, they give us what we want. And then the last three things I added in are making assertions about the, uh, the dice options being passed on to each dice set and then these would be cascaded down to the individual dice but we already have specs written for that and know that they work so I'm not gonna go that far into the weeds for it and our last item to do is with the configuration it only provides the options on the dice and uses the default configurations on the um, for nerd dice configuration. So this will be, uh, I'll write this and we'll take a look at it. So for this set here, we're calling the method with just the dice options. We keep the configuration so it will do the configuration specs on the, the items that are um, so all those items will match our third one and then the passes on the foreground color will match the, the the third set of specs that we've got and the only other thing we have left to do is raise an argument error and write that so pause and do that all right so we've got this written and this will raise the argument here in dice set for the check in the check low high argument method. So I don't like the con the this error message in this context. So we'll probably fix that after we implement the method, but that's where we're going to start. Let's see if we can still get some failures here or if we've got bigger problems. We do have bigger problems. syntax here. trailing comma, and then I've got no commas here. Take a look at this and try to isolate it. I think I've found it here on line 
104, which will probably also be a problem Still producing syntax errors here. I'll continue looking around. So it looks like an indentation issue masked this. And it'll also be the, the case here. One more time. Still have some syntax errors. And I did the same thing on lines 84 here. Yay, we've got failures. Beautiful failures. All right. Okay, layout space, layout line length. We'll just autocorrect that. So we've got our failures. Let's look into implementing this method. So we've got nerd dice. our method signature. I'll write my method comment. All right, so I've got my method level comment here. And So the first thing I'm going to do is isolate out the, the dice options. So we're going to create a private method down here. think about this. At least for now, I'm not going to refactor this out into its own method. So
but we've got our ability score options. Now, or now we need to actually get ability score options. And this is what we want to This is what we want here. And this will uh, we'll do the opposite. Or actually, we'll just define the method. for each of the keys here, we're going to want to have either For each of these, we'll do that. So we've got our private method here that interprets the ability score options and returns a hash with those, either the value specified if one exists. We need assignment operators here. or what's in the configuration if nothing's in the hash. So now we can go back to our, our method here and Start with a, an empty hash here. And then for each of these, we're going to call roll dice. be with number of sides rolled and then we'll double 
plus flat are dice options. And this line is really long, so it'll get split up when we autocorrect it with Rubicup. We'll take the highest, and it will be from the score dice kept all right let's see if this will compile Here, so 132 and 139. Gotta close that parentheses. Match close parentheses P to string match So if I comment out this line and try to run my specs, they'll all fail. We've got a, an argument error in all of those cases because I'm trying to make use of the dice options, which we haven't. back and try to fix this line. Go into the console. Which we can't do. We'll go into IRB. I just need to call it with map. Unmatched close parentheses. just isolate the regular expression part, assign that to a variable. Uh, that's my problem, is that that is not... That's because I have the parentheses in the wrong place. Now we're down. 
down to four failures. Foreground and background, foreground. So those are errors with the specs. One thirty one, one thirty seven, one eighty four, and one ninety. go. Let's see if that will cause us to pass. It does run the whole sweep. That seems to work. We will now deal with the wrath of Rubocop. Line length is too long. Module has too many lines. Just going to get even worse after we try to autocorrect things. We've got module length, line length on one, and then assignment that branch condition size on 235. So none of these are going to be super quick fixes except for maybe 137, but since everything is passing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit locally. I'll stop here on this video, and in the next video, I'll try to remedy these things before moving on. So. squash these later, but for now we'll just do a commit. And we've got that. We'll stop there. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.